one was the two T cell specific uh, deficient mice in 2008. And it, I'm going to show you the, some uh, data published in 2000, 2008 for, the, for your introductions. So naive, T, naive STIM1 deficient T cells showed completely impaired uh, stock related calcium entry and R2 production, which is absolutely calcium NFAT dependent, but STIM deficient, uh, STIM deficient mass shows a normal cytomocyte development. And in contrast to the STIM1 deficiency, uh, STIM2 deficient naive T cell shows normal stability calcium influx and the R2 productions and shows as well as the normal T cell development. So, and so different from STIM1 deficiency, the STIM2 deficiency retained a lower plateau of the long term calcium influx especially the after 20 minutes. Here you can see the colored lines. The base, the base of calcium level is lower than the, the, the control uh, calcium concentrations. So suggesting, this data suggests that the STEM2 plays an important role for the maintenance of the uh, maintenance and the sustenance of the calcium influx rather than triggering the initial calcium influx. And we further confirm the STEM functions, STEM2 functions, uh, by quantifying the nuclear localization of NFAT1 by immunocyte chemistry. As com in controlled T cells, the NFAT nuclear translocation is sustained more than six hours, but Consistent with calcium, uh, calcium influx data, the STEM2 in STEM2 deficient T cells, NFAT localization is normal in, within the initial half an hour, but this uh, response does not sustain in the later time point. And as two physiological data, so control T cells show the, the typical inward calcium inward current and a large sodium current in divalent free solutions without magnesium and calcium. In contrast to the stim, uh, controlled T cell, STEM1 deficient T cell shows uh, no crack current and no sodium current. And the STEM2 deficient T cell shows a uh, very slight re reduction of the crack current, but this difference does not reach the statistical difference. So overall, now we know that both STEM1 and STEM2 are positive regulators of sustained calcium influx in T cells, which means to investigate the role of the stock related calcium entry in T cell development, we should delete the both STEM1 and the STEM2. Otherwise, we each uh, they are uh, they compensate each other well. So. Now, what's the role of the stock-related calcium entry in T cell development? We first established that uh, STEM1 and STEM2 double deficient mice using CD4 pre mice because we first established a STEM1 uh, condition knockout mice using CD4 pre mice. And then, but here you can see that double knockout mice shows a normal T cell development as judged by the CD4, CD8 protein. Despite the complete de uh, defect of stock related calcium entry and the crack channels. So, as I said in introduction, as in, in the, sorry, double positive cells or? It's double positive cells. Uh, yeah. So, as I said in uh, introductions, and the calcium deficient mice using CD4 clay mice shows a partial defect of positive selection. So, which suggests the CD4 clay gene deletion is too late to examine the cymic selection. So, thus, we establish the uh, uh, chimeric mice transferred with the fetal, bone or, uh, fetal liver cells from wild type mice and double knockout mice. And so these liver cells transfer to the uh, congenic 
mice on the lab to look at backgrounds. And surprisingly, again, the T cell development, development looks normal as to the CD4 and the CD8 protein, despite the complete de uh, defect of the stability calcium entry uh, stimula by stimulation with tapsgalin or anti CD3 of the double positive cytosides. We, we obtained the same results from barbiturin mediated um, SIG1 to double deficient mice. So if you use a barbiturin mice, you can delete the genes at the hematopoietic stem cell stages. So we couldn't see that any um, delay or defect of the T cell development at embryo or adult stages. And we observed the same cell numbers despite the complete defect of the stock-related calcium entry in double ne at double negative stages or double positive stages. So, and then to investigate whether the extracellular calcium or calcium signaling is still required for the T cell development in the absence of or in the absence of stock-related calcium entry. We carried out in vitro T cell development using the OP9 delta 1 systems. We first isolated the lineage negative scar on positive bone marrow cells and seeded onto uh, OP9 delta 1 cells in the presence of cyclosporin A, which, which inhibits the calcium activity. So as you can see, the T cell development from double knockout uh, bone marrow cells is efficiently blocked by the low dose of calcineurin uh, so, uh, cyclosporin A. Here you can see the one and more is enough to block the T cell development of double knockout mice. So suggesting the calcium signaling is still working in the uh, during the development of so how about the extracellular calcium concentration? We use a, a great calcium, uh, pre prefer we use a EGTA, which is preferentially creating uh, calcium rather than the magnesium. So, and then to get rid of the creating of intracellular uh, calcium, intracellular calcium, we first mix the EGTA with culture medium and incubate it overnight and then use a chelating media for the differentiation. And then if we create the EGT uh, calcium with two millimolar EGTA, there is almost no calcium in a culture medium. The development from the double knockout bone marrow cells is completely blocked. So this data suggests the double T cell development from the double knockout bone marrow cells still use extracellular calcium and also the calcium signaling in the absence of stock related calcium. Did, did you look at what these double negative cells are? Are they double negative thermocytes? So do they express CD4425? Or system? are they uh, coming for progenitors or uh, you know, redirected uh, HSCs? Any, any idea? 